Good morning everyone, Tater here. Welcome to Tater Games. Today we're actually going to continue our talk from last Friday when we started talking about code and how to start code. So let's do it. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone out there because this channel is actually getting an amazing amount of subscribers in such a short amount of time. So thank you guys all for subbing. Thank you guys all for helping me out so I can continue to do these type of things. And today we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about C Sharp, um, mainly C Sharp. I know it's going to say code explained, but remember the languages are quite similar, so it's, it's not too fussy. So the first thing we are going to look at are how functions work, sort of why they exist, uh, what is their purpose in life. One of the most important things is to acknowledge that there are actually more than one type of function. There are two types of functions that I would recommend a noob starting out on. One is called an IE numerator function and the other one is known as a void function. Now don't get me wrong, they're extremely similar, but they are used in different ways because one kind of has time involved with it, whilst the other is just called all at once. So let's start off with the most basic and the one that you guys kind of need to know, regardless of what stage you're at. This is something that you really do need to know, um, which is the void function, which is the most basic function you can create. So by default, when you open up a script in Unity or create a script in Unity and open it up in Mono Develop Visual Studio, either one is great. They, they both work the exact same way. Nothing is really different between them. Um, the first thing you'll see is that there are already two functions there. One is called a start function and the other one is called an update function. Just because of the way that the script is actually laid out, you can already tell what a function is. It's these big chunks of code that have stuff inside of it that is run at certain times when it is called. By default, Unity does have start and update, and this is called at the very start of the script's life. So when the script is run for the very first time, void start will run whatever is in between it. So last time we talked about variables and how they kind of work and now when we come to functions, functions are sort of just a means of changing variables when you want. So you can create functions that do specific things and then call them every time you want to do that thing. So like I said before, we are going to learn the void function first and the void function is pretty much something that is called once right through. So everything within that chunk is actually called once per frame. I'm not going to go too complex because I know it can be very hard to understand. I mean, I struggle to understand this, which is why I'm telling you guys. I'm not going to tell you guys the easy stuff that is quite easy for me to understand, although some people might also struggle with that. No, we're just going to focus on some of the things that I struggled with. Hopefully you guys learn from this. And the first one was why functions exist. Before I learned about functions, I was actually chucking everything inside the update function. And I was chucking it there because you can kind of use condition statements, which are if statements. So if something is something, then do something else. Um, and I used to use these condition statements to actually act as a function, which was completely unnecessary because it was constantly checking whether or not uh, something was available. It's kind of a wasted use of memory. So the update function should have very little in it. You don't want to put too much inside a single function. You just want to put exactly what you need. And if you need to add more stuff, you can always call two functions at the exact same time. Keep your functions very simple to the core things that you need and also you can create more than one function every time. For example, sometimes when you have a function that says move, so we want a function to make something move. Like last time, I'll just use the cup for an example. So we want the cup to move from A to B. Uh, we want it to teleport from A to B as a better example because it's instantaneous. Functions are instantaneous. Well, this function is. So the only thing we are going to write within that function is change this position to this position for this object. Now, of course, there are one hell of a lot more things that we can actually do with this. We can add a sound script, but when it comes to me, I like to make different functions for different things. For example, if we wanted to play a sound, we should make another function that only focuses on playing sound. I mean, you can if you wanted to. You can put a sound thing like um, you want an audio source to play something. Uh, so we're going to call the audio source and say, hey, you should play this sound. We can put it within the function that takes this cup from A to B, but then that's sort of taking up room and it's doing something that we don't necessarily need for it to be there. If we want a nice clean script, we should make another function that also calls sound. And whenever we want to move this from A to B, we can actually choose whether or not we want to call sound. We call both functions at the same time. 
there's a very easy way to understand kind of the structure of how functions should be laid. I mean, it doesn't have to be that way, but it should be that way. In my opinion, it keeps things very tidy and it's much easier to understand. So as I explained before, there are actually more than one type of function. There are two types of functions that you as a beginner should actually be focusing on. And now we're going to talk about the IE numerator function because this one is called once it runs through a script, but the IE numerator function can actually run through the script several times. In fact, as many as you want. It can also deal with time. For example, if you want something to move from A to B, but you want it to move there after let's say two seconds, then we can actually do this with that script. So we can use a yield statement, which basically means that we want the script to wait a specific amount of time in order for it to continue. This is extremely easy to do. We'll talk about more scripts later. However, today we're just going to focus on the functions and what they're used for and why you should create them. So again, let's say we want to move our cup from A to B, but first of all, when we call it, we want it to actually wait two seconds. We can call this a cooldown second. And the times you would use this, for example, if you have a teleport or let's speak more to your guys level, let's say that you want to use an ability. Like in League of Legends, there are thousands of abilities that take a little while to charge. So you don't want them completely activating it immediately. You kind of want them to charge up whatever they're using and then fire it after a certain amount of time. So let's use the cup as an example yet again. We want this cup to be able to use its teleport ability. We'll go from A to B, but we want a cooldown sort of timer for it to charge up the actual ability. How are we going to do this? Well, we can use an IE enumerator function and we can actually make it wait for a specific amount of seconds before actually running the rest of the function. So let's say we call the function. It's going to wait two seconds, then all of a sudden it's going to run the teleport function. And what we can then do after that is actually make it wait another amount of seconds before you can call the script again. Which is very, very cool. Of course, this isn't networked and we're not going to get too complex. You can do this in single player stuff, uh, but you do not want someone's computer actually judging the time. You want a server to judge the time, especially in competitive games. Don't worry about that. That's not what you guys are here for. You guys are just beginners, which means that you guys need to know sort of these basic fundamentals. If you're trying to make a MOBA, make it single player first. Um, it's a lot easier to understand. I haven't actually told you guys how to call a function. Well, since we have two types of functions, there are actually really easy ways to call the first one, which is the void function. Basically, when you create a function similar to void start or void update, you kind of structure it exactly the same and write void space, the name of the void. Then you want two brackets and then you want two squiggly lines to close it off. Again, take a look at the start and update function to see how it is structured and it's actually very easy to understand. To call it, we actually just type in the name of our function, two brackets, and then end it with a semicolon. Inside the start function, we can actually put this call towards the other function by writing in the name, brackets, and semicolon. This means that whenever the start function is called, the other one is actually going to be called at the exact same time. I really think that this is extremely fun to learn. I don't know, I had a lot of fun trying to learn this type of stuff. Now it's slightly different when it comes to the IE numerator function. If you want to call an IE numerator function, you're actually starting a coroutine. So what we want to do is actually type in start coroutine. Then of course we have brackets and within those brackets, we want to put the name of our IE numerator function. Then of course you want to put brackets at the end of those, then at the very end of the statement or line, you want to put a semicolon to close it all off. And this means that if we put it in our start function, it would actually call the IE numerator function. They're very, very similar. And the easiest way for you guys to understand it is to say that one works with time and the other one doesn't. Functions are cool. Functions are very cool. Now there is one thing I haven't actually mentioned about the functions. Remember last time we talked about variables? Well, now we can actually use variables within functions. This is why functions are so cool. You can actually pass information through calling a function. Remember last time I probably said that you have ints, you have floats, you have strings, and you have booleans, which are all things that we can change and manipulate. However, when it comes to functions, we actually can call functions whilst giving some numbers for that function to perform or use or mold or do whatever you want with it. The way we do this is actually within those brackets at the very end. I mean, they seem pretty pointless if they are not being used for anything. This is what they are used for. Inside those brackets, you can put variables. For example, if we want to write int space and then give a name for the integer that you just created. 
So let's do an example here. If we wanted to move our cut from A to B, but we also wanted it to take away something like mana or, or magic or whatever you like to call it, then we can actually write in a number so every time it can change whenever we call the function. What I mean by this is within those brackets, you can actually put int space and then give a name for your integer. And remember an integer is a whole number, which means we can take away 200, 100. You can do anything with these variables. The point is, is that within the function, you may need some numbers to work with, but you don't know what those numbers are yet. So let's call a function. Let's call a function, let's call teleport, but we need to also feed in the information within the brackets of our calling statement, which remember is just teleport with two brackets and then a semicolon to end it off. So if we want to call that function, we actually need to fill in the gaps that are missing. For example, the int, uh, the int mana cost or whatever we like to call it needs there needs to be a number there. So what you can do within those brackets is actually put the number in there. So every time we call that function, we need to give it a number as well as calling the function or else it's actually not going to work. It's going to come back as an error. What this does is kind of clear up our text. For example, if there is only one function that needs a specific number or word or true or false statement, then that means we don't need to crowd the very top of our script with variables that every function can access. We can actually keep it very clean. We can put all our variables that only this one function will ever need inside that actual function. And if we want to add more than one variable, we actually separate them with a comma. God, I think that was very poorly explained. I hope it wasn't. I hope a lot of you guys actually get it out there. And I hope this is teaching you a little bit about code because I'm trying to explain it in very simple terms. You don't need to know the advanced version. You can explain it to someone uh, like this. I think that would have helped me had I been starting out. Um, but again, no one ever explained this to me. Anyway, I hope some of you guys actually learn something from this video and I hope that some of you guys take the knowledge and actually go and work with it now. And of course, as always, just go to a Discord channel. You can contact me on there. You can direct message me. I really don't mind uh, for any scripts that you guys have that you want me to check out um, and stuff like that. So if you're just learning out, it's a, it's a nice thing to have somebody give you feedback on what you're doing. Anyway, as per usual, I'm going to go have a productive day. I'm going to get some music done when I'm working on a collab with someone, which is really cool. I see you guys all tomorrow with something else that is interesting. So see you then.